Praise the Lord. This is the day the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. I trust all of you are in fine mood tonight in the blessing of God. And I trust this Thursday evening the Lord is just being real to you and you've had a great day. I want to ask the Lord's blessing on this lesson tonight as we come together, not in body but in spirit, and uh, let's agree together tonight. Father, we just thank you for these days. We thank you for this time to study your word. I pray, God, that you will minister. I pray that you will strengthen. I pray that you will anoint. I pray that you will give me what I need to say to minister to the hearts of your precious people. Give your blessings upon what we say and do, Holy Spirit, in Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. Just a small, short verse, Proverbs chapter 9 and verse 8 tonight. <clears throat> if you have your Bible, if you'd like to follow along. And uh, it's a statement that Solomon made, and it says in verse 8, Do not correct a scoffer, lest he hate you. Do not correct a scoffer, lest he hate you. Rebuke a wise man, and he will love you. So the scoffer will hate you, and a wise man will love you. And I want to speak to you tonight for a little while about how are you at rebukes? How do you do when you're told no? How do you respond when you are rebuked? Told you're wrong. What is our reaction? Well, I know what the normal reaction is in all of us because we've all got the same nature. We recoil. We defend ourselves. We blame the person that said it. We all get defensive. We get upset. We get angry. We think bad things. But, you know, I really believe that this time that we have been shut down and and called by the Holy Spirit, not just for us shut down physically around us, but spiritually, to go into ourselves, to go into our prayer closet, to find the secret place, and to let the Holy Spirit really work on us. Let the Holy Spirit develop character in your life. Great and mighty days are in front of the church. Great and mighty outpourings are coming. But now is the, the time that's so critical. Now is the time when God is looking for us to become everything he needs us to be. I'm so aware of this, saints, that this time is not by accident. It didn't just happen to happen. I believe it's divinely orchestrated by the Lord for us to get along with God and to let God do some deep things in us. And this is one of the things that the Lord deals with me about on an ongoing basis. He keeps bringing me lower and lower and lower. Smith Wigglesworth one time said, God keeps breaking me and breaking me and breaking me. I feel the same way a lot. I feel that God is, is holding me tight, snubbed up tight on a short leash. That's no good. That's not acceptable. I don't want that. Things that in the past seems like I would get by with it. Now the Holy Spirit is really bringing me to a new place. You see, when God's going to bring you to a new place, he, he cordons you off. He quarantines you. He puts you by yourself so it's just you and Him. He gives you lots of time so you and He can work it out. And you know, when pride comes up, God goes away. So what God is wanting to do is draw near to his people. He's wanting to develop some things deep in us that we're not going to respond in the future like we have in the past. We're not going to react. We're not going to get upset. But we're going to roll with the punches and keep a smile and a right heart. And as we do... God is going to be pleased because he knows he's got someone that's been tested in the fire 
This is our testing time. This is our fire time right now. With fires burning all around California. Our sky is orange today. And it's, it's, it's God burning in us and developing in us a new character, a new relationship, a new peace. You know, the lower you go, the higher God goes in your life. The less of you there is, the more of God there is. People say, I want more of God. Well, there's got to be less of you. We have to go down less and less, as John said, and he has to increase more and more. The Bible says in Isaiah chapter 6 that when Uzziah died, the Lord was lifted up and the glory of the Lord came down in the temple. I don't think it's any chance that God put those words, penned those words, the Holy Spirit. In the year that King Uzziah died, Isaiah said, I saw the Lord high and lifted up. What did Uzziah represent? He was a godly king, and for many years he did wonderful reforms. But in the end, he got filled with pride because he had subdued his enemies, and he was prosperous, and he had built, and he had planted vineyards, and he had done all these wonderful things. And, and, and you know, when we don't have an enemy, when we don't have any reason to pray, when we're all prosperous, we tend to get full of pride. And he got full of pride, and he walked into the temple and was waving the incense before the Lord which was the job of the high priest. And the high priests came in and said, what are you doing in here? Why are you doing this? And he said, it's not only for you to burn the incense. I can do that. Why would he do that? He didn't have any reason. There wasn't any motive for him to do it other than pride had filled his heart. I'm not only a king, I can be the priest. No, you've overstepped your boundaries, Uzziah. What happened to him? He was stricken with leprosy. And then he got out quickly and he had to die outside the gates of the city because he had to be quarantined. And, you know, it was a sad end for a godly, wonderful man. But when Uzziah died, when the pride died, then the glory of the Lord showed up. Hallelujah. We spend all of our time fighting the devil and fighting this one and fighting that one, being upset over here. Why don't you be savage on yourself as you are on others? Why don't you take yourself in hand, pull yourself in line, say, Lord, it's not my father, my mother, and my sister, my brother, but it's me standing in the need of prayer. What can I do? What can I become? What can you change in me, God, that you can be proud of me in a new way? I want to challenge us to not waste these times when we're quarantined and separated, but to let the Holy Ghost do His work in a new way. When we come out of quarantine, we all come together. Oh, what joy there will be if you've grown into a new relationship. To humble yourself is to exalt God. When you humble yourself, you exalt God. Humble yourself, and in due season, God will lift you up. But why isn't God exalted today? Too many people have exalted themselves. You know, I, I, I was thinking about this and I thought about the word narcissism. And I looked it up. And in the dictionary, it means extremely self-centered person who has an exaggerated sense of self-importance. A person that's focused on themselves and they have an exaggerated sense of self-importance. And it comes out of Greek mythology, actually. And uh, it was a beautiful youth who pines away for the love of his own reflection that he sees in the water. And he is then turned into a narcissist flower because of his love for himself that he saw his reflection in the water. And this is something that we're all born with, some of us more than others, but it's something that God will not tolerate in the life of the people that he wants to use and that he wants to exalt. It says the humble he will teach his way. Well, I'm not ever hearing from God. Maybe you're too full of yourself. Maybe it's, it's you, your own life, the humble will he teach his way. 
He said, I, the high and lofty one that's holy, I dwell with the contrite, the low. Why? Because they hear, they heed, and they change. They're not afraid to obey God because they're not going to obey just themselves. I pray, God, break our pride down so you can use us. What did God say about Saul? Saul, when you were small in your own eyes, when you were small in your own eyes, I was with you. I helped you. But you got lifted up in pride. And you wouldn't obey me. I said, kill the, kill the enemy, kill the king. Kill all the livestock. You spared the livestock. You spared the king. You disobeyed the Lord. He's either Lord of all or he's not Lord at all. Take God out of the counselor position and make him the Lord of your life. Humble yourself and let God be God over our lives. You know, most of us don't spend our life fighting the devil. We spend our life fighting ourselves. The devil's been defeated. We just have to resist him and he will flee, the Bible says. Jesus destroyed him and knocked his brains out when he came out of the tomb on the third day. We are victorious. Well, why do we fight so hard? It's our flesh. You got pride in your flesh, you'll do anything the devil would do. Oh, God, help us. Help us. Hallelujah. Paul said, you have died and you are crucified with Christ. I live, nevertheless not I, but Christ lives in me. The only reason I'm alive, the only purpose I have is to live for him and to do his will. I've lost my own goals. I've lost my own purpose. I've lost my own hobbies. I've lost my own desires. I have one desire, God, and that's you. I live for you. Boy, give me a person like that, and God can do great and mighty things in the lives of those people. The El Moody said, it's yet to be seen what God can do with one man who's totally yielded, totally surrendered to him. I know you fight with this because we're all alive and we all have this flesh nature. We inherited it from Adam and he was a rebel and we're rebels. And we're born that way and most of us die that way. But God help us as his people to do something that's great in this shutdown time. Hallelujah. If the greatest sin is pride, and it surely was, because Lucifer sinned without a tempter, he sinned by being an archangel in heaven and having a perfect environment, and he still turned on God. Adam and Eve did the same thing. They were living under the blessing of God in the garden, and they turned on God. And they never had a bad daddy that abused them. They never had a reason for somebody to blame They lived in a perfect environment, and they still became a traitor to God. The same thing is true with us. If the greatest sin is pride, then the greatest virtue surely is humility. The greatest virtue is humility. I heard Joyce Meyer say one time, self-pity is a form of idolatry. And when she said it, I thought, wait, that sounds a little bit strong. Idolatry? Worship of an idol? And she said, yes, idolatry is the worship of self. Idolatry can be the worship of you. So when you're feeling bad about yourself, you're feeling sorry for yourself, you're just worshiping yourself. Hallelujah. The Lord certainly didn't promise us a rose garden, but he said, I'll be with you in every battle. I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. I will stand by your side, pick up your head and square your shoulders And quit feeling sorry for yourself. Amen. Hallelujah. Something happens when you really give him the reins. Something happens when you quit trying to control things. And you just throw it all in the lap of Jesus. Say, Lord, it's yours. Amen. It can be anything. It can be your children you're praying for. It can be a financial. It can be a hardship. It can be sickness. But something happens when we give him the reins. Jesus builds his church. God fights our battles. God does all the heavy lifting. 
His yoke is easy and His burden is light. For who? For those that have completely surrendered to me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. So today, I want to close with 1 Corinthians 11 and 30. It says, if we judge ourselves, we will not be judged. But when we are judged, we are chastened by the Lord. One of the greatest things you can do, you know, in regards to self is to judge yourself. How did I do in that? How did I respond? I've had several tests recently, and I've immediately, after I've gone through those, said, Lord, how did I do today? I wanted to please you today. Help me, Lord. So when we are judged, we are chastened by the Lord, that we may not be condemned with the world. Amen. Instead of making self king, we subdue ourselves. Jesus becomes first. We deny ourselves and we lose the I. The I. I remember one time I was talking to a businessman and I, he was asking me some things about the church. This was years ago. And I was sharing with him. And uh, there was another man that was there. It was a close friend of mine. And a day or so later, I had lunch with this close friend. And I said, yeah, I enjoyed talking to that businessman. And I said, he's a nice guy. And he said, yeah, I said, he liked you too. He said, you just need to learn to do one thing. And I said, well, what's that? He said, you need to learn to lose the eye. And I said, lose the eye? He said, yeah, you were talking about the ministry and the church and the things of God, and you kept saying I. You need to lose the eye. Boy, I felt so convicted because I remembered statements that I had made to this man specific things on specific subjects and I felt the Holy Ghost correction in my life chasing of the Lord and I repented in tears and said Lord help me to lose who I am so that you can be glorified exonerated lifted up and glorified in Jesus mighty name amen amen let's pray together Father I thank you tonight for this time that we have together, I pray that you'll minister to the hearts of your people. I pray, oh God, that you will help us to grow. Even though we're sequestered off from each other, I pray that this will be a time of growth for God's people. That we'll spend some serious time before you saying, Lord, search me. Know my heart. See if there be any wicked way in me. Examine my motives. Take me to a new place in you, for I surrender all. In Jesus' precious name, amen, amen, and amen. God bless you. I'll see you Sunday morning. Amen.